thank you thank you sir uh, uh, good evening everybody and i would like to thank aiways uh, for this opportunity so the topic is uh, i was not really sure about how to go with this uh, managing a vip patient with complaints of floaters and flashes we get uh, regular uh, patients on this but how to manage in a vip patient so the outline of this presentations will be uh, on vip patients uh, how to define pathogenesis uh, symptoms and simulating conditions counseling a vip patient or any patient uh, per se management uh, and persistent is symptomatic floaters or symptomatic floaters so the first we come to what actually is by uh, we mentioned by vip patients is this uh, vip this phrase actually describe the elevated social status afforded to influential and prestigious members of society including politicians executives of major companies celebrities as well as other prominent individuals and you all encounter patients who are considered vip for one reason or another and proper management of these vip patients can offer downstream benefits to your practice or academic institution in the form of bolstered reputation practice growth and funding so there are few things we have but what actually is a prerequisite when you start seeing these patients i feel there are few points which i felt important caring about these patients person status and rather to simply treat them the same way you treat anyone else with the same eye problem it's okay to roll out the red carpet but make sure the office is clean the waiting period should be less offer preferential appointment scheduling to accommodate the vip schedule and your delivery of healthcare to the vip patient is no different from your delivery of healthcare to any other patient so we should not forget this the last days of michael jackson avoid vip syndrome when doctors allow a vip patients broader social status to influence medical decision making the consequences can be dire don't get distracted or diverted by the vip status think clearly be relaxed and stay within the standard of care so the first point is floater there are these are dots specks lines circles cobweb which we see in the visual field they appear outside there but actually they float inside the eye tiny clump of vitreous cells which cast shadow on the retina and most noticeable when you see a white background or a blue sky so these are all annoying so usually the the assurance that we usually usually decreases after a few months once we have a vitreous separation but sometimes can be persistent 50% leads to difficulty in reading 30% leads difficulty in driving but i was not aware when i started searching for publications there were reports of suicidal attempt due to persistent floaters so this is a small pathogenesis i think we when we explain maybe a compliant and understandable patient has to be explained about the pathogenesis of these floaters i'm not going into the details of this now the second symptom is flashes physical stimulus of vitreous pooling part of the retina so usually it appears and fades very quickly so we have this pool in the vitreous in from the periphery or from the center so we have a retinal traction which causes uh, photopsia or flashes this is the actual pathology posterior vitreous detachment which causes these symptoms now synergies of the central posterior vitreous increasingly seen with age can be precipitated more in myopes past ocular surgeries or in trauma this line i usually quote for almost all the patients that if you are more than 65 or at least you just can have a semi uh, small calculation on that that more than 65% patients over the age of 65 years will have pvd and their symptoms intermittent blurred vision glare or haze and pvd with complications if at all you have any vitreous hemorrhage retinal tear or retinal detachment so this this is the uh, typical pvd picture the complications as i was telling that the first once you have these patients of pvd or floaters you should triage these patients according to their age according to the risk factors pvd in itself does not require any treatment but symptomatic patients should be reexamined at 6 weeks as 3.4% of them may have a new retinal tear see earlier if they are having new shower of flashes floaters or reduction in vision these are the simulating conditions for flashes we can it can be seen in migraine with aura stays for some specified time mostly bilateral you have jagged lines or heat waves occipital tumors and vertebral vestibular uh, vestibular tia also can have flashing of can flashes glares and halos you can see around lamps or street lamps in case of cataract in case of intraocular lens post refractive surgery vitreous hemorrhage along with pvd can have retinal tear so these are also few things you have to find out the etiology vitreitis is very important for when you have a floater infections and autoimmune conditions has to be ruled out 
and definitely last but not the least retinal attachment when you have a shadow along with all these symptoms. So what to do? So examination proper, vision definitely anterior segment examination is very important to rule out EVITs. History of any anti or any past surgery which is important to rule out any inflammation. Dilated fundus examination with scleral depression is important to, to rule out any intermediate EVITs, uh, past plan exudates. Ultrasound can be of benefit in some cases, but not OCT. Urgent referral to a retina specialist examining or explaining the disease condition. So these are a few things, if you're anterior segment uh, surgeon, probably these are the few things you have to keep in mind. Treat peripheral retinal degenerations according to the preferred practice, what you follow. I uh, personally, I give this uh, Moorefields uh, guidelines to the patients. Feels very handy and actually patient's acceptance is much good along with the dummy eyes demonstration. These are the few illustrations I have in my clinic which I show to the patients. This is a normal retina, an abnormal retina, where you have a detached retina. So this I think for a knowledgeable person or probably a person which is partially Google trained can actually be more educated by these illustrations. These are the few other diagrams I usually have carry with me, the retinal breaks, a small retina, localized retinal attachment or a detachment almost covering the retina on the central part of the macula. So these are the few risk factors you explain the patients and you can actually uh, prognosticate, actually explain how to, how a disease process follows starting from fly flashes and floaters. When you have a tear, probably these are the pictures where uh, treatment, how is this treatment done, how it helps in treating the condition, how it helps in preventing retinal attachment can also be shown by nice illustrations. So these again are the same, we have breaks and lattices where we have fresh laser marks done. These are the old laser marks, so how it barricades the weak spots can be explained with these specific illustrations. But if you have patients who have persistent symptomatic floaters, most eye doctors consider floaters to be minor ailment, but in fact, these are the few things which are already there in the publications. 33% patients have noticeable vision impairment, few have migraine, Anxiety, this 6% patients have anxiety, and as I have already told that 0.06% had considered suicide for persistent floaters. So intervention worth considering in cases with moderate to severe floaters. These are the possible treatments. So NDEA uh, laser vitreolysis I think was done before, but it has a negative impact. Definitely the floaters are being fragmented to multiple floaters. Risk of detachment also becomes more. Floaters only vitrectomy are being tried this deep anterior vitrectomy during FECO and two poor, poor parsimonial floaterectomy. This was one uh, publication in Asia Pacific Journal. Uh, uh, so I'm not very convinced about that. Probably we can have opinion from the chair regarding this. So these are all possible treatment options for persistent floaters. This is the information booklet I give to my patients and especially I explain the, uh, when you have a VIP patient, probably these are a few things which come very handy from the Moorefields guideline. And the patients who probably is not understanding this picture sometimes becomes very handy when you treat the untreated eye may come up with this where there's a risk of losing your vision. So the thing is re reassurance in most of the cases. So I need to conclude with this that sound understanding of the basic pathophysiology of the disease is very important. Even the symptoms are very mild. Treat VIP patient as any other patient with needed modifications in the approach, not treatment. Floaters and flashes can be annoying and the key word to handle this symptom is patience for both the parties. Follow, uh, follow prefer, prefer practice pattern as we all do. Accurate examination with illustrations is a must. And in very rare conditions, surgery may have some benefits in case of persistent symptoms. Thank you so much for your patient hearing. Uh, thank you, Dr. Sudipta. Uh, so as I said, the VAP patient is any other patient, but you have to give a good communication uh, you have to have a good communication with the patient, that's all. First, you have to identify which is a dangerous flashes and ordinary flashes and dangerous floaters and ordinary floaters. So that is the main thing because we should not miss any break or anything like that. So sometimes the patient will say, I get flashes when I enter a dark room or something. It may not be very significant. That is suppose nighttime flashes may persist for a few months. That is one thing. Uh, then sudden movement of the eyes. It is called Moore's lightning streaks. Sudden movement of the eyes or head, you can get sometimes one flash. That is also not very significant. But the real flashes is very annoying. So, and when you see little vitreous hemorrhage and you don't see any break, it, the most important uh, clue is to call the patient after a couple of weeks or a week later and re-examine. So the patient also will be 
uh, reassured that uh, if the, nothing is going wrong, if you can take a photo and document it, best. Because sometimes on the first visit, we will not see any break. After the first visit, you may see a break. So these are a few things. And floaters, some people will come and say, two dots I can see for three months. It may not, may not be very significant. Sudden onset of large number of floaters uh, is the warning uh, that problem. So these are some of the points that I will... Important uh, yes. while counseling the patient means pe people will say, "Yeah, I've been seeing floaters for months." That doesn't have much meaning, but you have to ask the patient to keep a note if there is a sudden increase in the number of floaters, not from one to two or three, one to ten, one to fifteen. That is significant. And sudden onset of flashes many times a day. If the patient is having flashes once or twice a week or so, no significance, uh, if, as long as the retina is okay. But you have to tell the patient that if you suddenly start seeing lots of flashes in a day, every hour, you have to immediately show. And you have to tell the patient that the examination is important just by informing own to many patients, they will call up and uh, discuss. It's, these things cannot be discussed. These things have to be seen. Then only you will know. And the important part is fresh breaks can develop. After, suppose you, a patient comes to you with acute onset PVD, you see a break, you treat it, make sure you call the patient for follow-up because he may have new breaks during the follow-up. So, okay. Yeah, just one small comment to add. Uh, it's not just the question of a VIP patient, for any patient for that matter. A uh, lot of patients, uh, when we do not find anything on the retinal examination, we tell them everything is okay, would not uh, probably want to come for a repeat visit. But if, you, if the, the uh, complaints of flashes and uh, floaters are significant, and you must always stress that there are a certain number of patients who, uh, approximately 3 to 5 percent patients who can uh, develop a break, fresh break in the first month. So that is what something that we tell our patients. And uh, sometimes VIP patients do not want to come for whatever reason or their schedule or travel. We usually tell them to make sure wherever they are to get a retinal examination, dilated retinal examination. And please Also, uh, make sure to tell all the patients who are post-operative to for sure come for a follow-up because uh, uh, with the high volume uh, cataract and refractive surgery going on, we do see a risk uh, in these patients, especially with complicated surgery. So these patients for sure, because they have a tendency, because they're VIP, to get a phone consultation or a teleconsultation. So that's something that we must avoid. Yeah. 